Good morning, these swans down here, they're on the way for breakfast. So this recording will be interrupted <laughs> by swan feeding. <laughs> Probably, we've been waiting for them. They were down at the other boat, now they're down at this He's boat. He's been waiting for them. <clears throat> yes, well, all right, I've been waiting for these swans. I like animals, I like swans. I like animals, where's I'm George? Like, Please attack me, you crazed animal. He feeds the swans from his bare fingers. And they go, lam, da, 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 da. Yeah, they're very cute. He's down there, don't worry, he's fine. He's well in view. He's just frozen, looking at us, going, what are you doing, human? So, here's a lesson for everybody. If you're on a nice mooring next to a picnic bench in a view, and you're yeah, comfortable there, don't move if it's raining. No. <laughs> Yesterday was fun. No, it's a silly choice. Just, just, if it's raining, don't move. To be honest, it would have been fine. Like, we'd have only got a little bit wet if the mooring that we'd first tried to get onto hadn't had a concrete shelf. I'm running along with the gas pole at one, you know, like at our first morning, just pounding it into the bottom to try and figure out where the shelf is. Sometimes it's two feet out, sometimes it's six inches out, sometimes it's not even there. Uh, so there was no room for us on the first morning, then we moved forward, tried for second morning. There was a gap between two boats and they were both clearly not on the Shropshire shelf because they were both like right in. So I was like, we'll fit, we'll fit. And Michael was like, I don't think we'll fit. And I'm like, we'll fit, we'll fit. And we were like a foot too long. Yeah. I was, like, I was still like, no, you can yep. make it. Nose the front end, start pulling over. Yeah, no, I'm not gonna fit. <laughs> Told you I wasn't gonna fit. So then we had to move up past the next bridge and find this morning here, which still resulted in a couple of like, minutes of you running along with the pole sticking in, it into the, in the I think it fits, I think it fits. In the absolute boring rain. George took off and got stuck in the brambles because I just dropped his lead to like, because oh yeah. Yeah, and the devil was in him. And I felt really bad for making us move. But now we're being swan costled. <laughs> but it did help with my like cabin fever. I didn't have cabin fever when we stopped. No, yeah, that's good. <laughs> I got a real fever because I got too cold and wet. But yeah, what do you got a fever. All right, I'm just going to pause and feed this one. Why is that one such a different colour? Okay, that's the dad, this is the mum. All I can say about the baby swan that's like much lighter yeah. is, is uh, that couple of swans needs to have a conversation. Yeah. I thinks there was a mailman. Mm. Or a uh, milk man or... No swan? That's enough. Male swan? Today we are heading towards the end of the Middlewich branch at Middlewich. Oddly enough. <laughs> Just before the junction, we're going to try and moor up and walk to the supermarket because George is out of food, we're out of food. The only people with food are the swans. <laughs> yeah, the swans are definitely prepared. Yeah, so we got to pick up some kibble, we got to pick up some chocolate, we got to pick up some victuals, and in order to do that, we need to make it to the end. And so we've got, what, uh, five miles? No, uh, I'd say six or seven. Six or seven miles. We got a bunch of miles and eventually two locks. And apparently, after the first lock, before the second lock, is where the breach was last year. Yeah, the big breach. The big middle which breach, which we found on Google Maps, <laughs> which was kind of interesting. It's like, you look, you know, because we were looking for like, oh, is there a place where you can moor and often we'll zoom in on Google Maps and see if there's places where boats are moored because that gives us an idea. And we zoomed on this one and we're like, there's no boats there. That's funny, there's no water here. That's funny, there's a great big breach. <laughs> Apparently Google isn't exactly up to date. Yeah, yeah. we go. We're going. <laughs> Stop accosting my dog. Goodbye, Swan family. It's time for George's pre-cruise towpath patrol. The route the Middlewich branch takes is mainly rural through farmland and occasional woodland. Despite his protests, George and Joe get on the boat at Weaver's Bridge. These converted brick stables would make lovely holiday rentals. I wonder if that's what they're used for. Mm -hmm. 
You never seem to be too far from a train line when you're on the canal. As we come round the bend before Bridge 23, we see a boat coming towards us. We are slightly closer to the bridge, which means on this occasion it is our right of way, and it makes more sense for us to pass each other on the left instead of on the right, so the other boat kindly moves to the side to make room for us to pass. This little cap is having a lovely snooze by the side of the canal, until we chug by and wake her up, that is. Oh, how lovely. Slurry storage solutions. I guess it makes sense with all the cows we've seen. It's time for the first lock of the day, and how's this for timing? Just as we approach the lock landing, there's a boat leaving the lock, so we only have a couple of seconds to wait before we can go down. It isn't often that we get lucky like this, but when it does happen, we really appreciate it. A quick hello to the crew of Narrowboat Longpod, one of the accounts we follow on Twitter. There are five boats waiting to go up the lock. Now we feel extra grateful for the lack of queue coming down. This brand new bit of canal is where the Middle Witch Breach happened last year. There are now some lovely new moorings, and I bet there's no shrubby shelf. This is the view down to the River Wheelock, where all the water ended up when it drained out of the canal. The Canal and River Trust has a video on their YouTube channel that shows a time lapse of the repairs. It's well worth a watch with the audio turned down. We'll link it below. Through a few more bridges, and we arrive at the Middle Witch Visitor Moorings. Luck is with us for the second time today as we find a spot on these popular moors. We just pulled in the middle of which we just passed bridge 30. No, sorry, 29. We're between bridge 29 and bridge 30. There's we, one, one uh, little war mooring space left for us, so we took it. Yeah, yeah. We came through the first lock outside of town, um, saw Long Pod. Hi. And behind Long Pod was four boats. Yeah waiting to go into the uh, lock and we this never happens to us but we arrived at the lock just as they were about to open the gate for the boat to to come out yeah so it was like ideal time to go down but then i didn't really until we got down and the gates opened i didn't realize that there was the backlog down there i thought it was just us moving down and we were like oh we were lucky well, and there, then was there's, there was actually five boats and a six yeah. pulling up there was two um people helping us who didn't know each other so i knew there was at least two boats uh, okay um but yeah and then the woman on the last on the fifth boat was like oh you know how many boats in front of me i was like oh there's four in front of you and then the guy was like oh, i don't care how many's in front of me I'm oh like, yeah i'm just telling you what you asked <laughs> like she asks how many, and then he goes off about, I'll take a life that's slow. I don't care how many boats there. And I was like, that's a really good attitude, but don't have a go at me because yeah. I was just telling you what you asked. There was mainly just cows along the way. Um, not a lot of boats, there was a few. I think, I, come to think of it, there was a boat every, like, five or ten minutes, like, lock yeah. cycle. So. About that, yeah. <laughs> about a lock cycle, that's true. So it, it was... So apparently it's busy going that way today. Yeah. But it was a nice trip, lots of cattle, 
I, a couple of little calves. They were cute. Lots of farms with lots of farm smells. Mmm, <laughs> intense farm <laughs> smellage. And then we got past the lock and we went through a section with ludicrously new sighting. And we were like, aha, <laughs> we have found the Middle Witch Breach. <laughs> She's no longer breached. But you were able to see over the side, so what did you see? Oh, uh, just like the river below. What's this buzzing? <laughs> it's, a, it's one of those, I'm, I'm pretending to be a bee flies. Um, yeah, there's a river below. Just wait for this to go. Okay. I like the sign yeah. with the V and the willow. Actually, there's been some really nice sign painting yeah. I've seen. Which one did you like? I can't remember the name of it. It was a strange name, something Den, or maybe a statement in Gaelic or something. Uh. Something a Den. And then there was this kind of um, lightish gray blue pattern of like a sort of landscape. And then there's this character there who's. Um, no, I didn't see this. Uh, it was quite pretty. I was just going to go for like the one that said, I don't give a duck. No, I don't give a duck was cute. Yeah. That, <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I looked over the side and like the bank is all like regrown with grass, but down the bottom there was a big area of reverse where like replanting had happened, but nothing had started to grow yet. Right. It was interesting. Luckily, we've got that shot from Google to give an idea of just how would it to look splash like? it would have been. It's amazing that they, um, they got it fixed like in. It was about seven or eight months. Yeah, there's these preformed concrete pieces. It's like this is what you would build a canal like <laughs> today. And they you'd have some machine that would be installing this stuff every few feet. Pretty amazing when you think about it, because basically what happened was somebody left all four paddles on both of the upstream locks. I think this locks. is the theory. It's not like proven. It's what was. It's sort of the official story. The official theory. Yeah. Eventually, it raised the pool between um, this lock below us and the next to the point where it started to breach over the side of the embankment and enough water went down that it actually um, eroded away the embankment and just all of a sudden all of the water flooded out and yeah, boats think, here were left high and dry. I think it happened overnight, didn't it? So. Yeah, it was really fast. So like, nobody noticed, like I guess they were left up in the evening, the last boat through, or you know, vandals opening them. Yeah, and then somebody noticed in the middle of the night as their boat went down, which the middle which branch um, was was closed off for the better portion of a year, and I, yeah, I think eight months or something. Eight yeah, or nine months. and there was a huge appeal for um, additional funding and everything, and somehow they were able to pull it off, and it's back together and, and in action again, which is great. Because man, does it save you a heck of a long route back. Yeah, this this um the Middlewich branch has been so busy. Like even yesterday in the rain, there were so many boats going past. Yeah. And I'm just wondering if people who were going to do this area last year went somewhere else, and now everybody's doing this. Everybody's this just area. going in. Yeah. It is kind of the shortcut. Yeah. And sort of the only shortcut over to the Quangoffin and Chester From, yeah, on that side and this side up to the Enderton boat lift. Yeah. So you got you know, you got everybody who wants to see the Enderton boat lift and the Ponca Vista kind of more them. or less has to do this route, right? So we are however not going to the Enderton boat lift at this point. We're turning the other way. Somebody who passed us yesterday but made it all the way to the Anderson boat lift. It makes you realize how close we actually are. Oh yeah, no, it's really close. Yeah, yeah like we turn north and it's it's something like an hour away. Mm. Um, but we've got other plans. <laughs> yeah, we are heading south on the Trans Mersey. I don't think we're that far from the junction now, but we're going to stay here for the night. And yeah, then head south to Great Hayward and then do the Calden and the Leap. And yeah, and sometime in the next couple of months, we want to get our blacking done. So hopefully we can get that booked in soon. Yeah. We have been wondering whether to do it ourselves and um, or whether to pay a marina or a yard, boatyard to do it. And I did a poll on Twitter <laughs> and there's lots of advice and it's kind of made me think that we could do it ourselves, like lots of people do do it. Oh, I totally think we could do it ourselves and I think it might be worth doing it once just to know. To, yeah, but the, but the poll is like about 50-50. Yeah, I'm because... I'm like, it's not conclusive, people. You know, people are like, well, you do it once, you get the experience and then you pay for it. Well, someone else said... Um, <laughs> it doesn't sound like a pleasant experience. Someone else said that they stayed on the boat while someone else did it and the actual labour was about £100 an hour, like the amount of hours mm. that it took them to do the blacking. Yeah, didn't, didn't take that much. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it would be nice not to pay for something that we could do ourselves. It's kind of like an oil change in your car or 
you know, like detailing of your car. So it's the sort of thing that you can totally do it yourself, and it's it's you know certainly cheaper to do it yourself, and it makes perfect sense to do it yourself. And most people don't because it's such a pain in the butt. <laughs> well, by the time you paid for the blacking the equipment, the pull out, the haul out, the hard standing, etc. I don't think you're really saving that much yeah. by not paying them to do it. Let's get a few more quotes. Yeah, we'll see. Anyway, that was a bit of a sidetrack. Mm. <laughs> but hey, boat life. So the important thing, really, right now, is we're sitting here and there's a little over there. <laughs> 14 minutes away, although if we'd gone from the big road by mm. the breach, it would have been 11 minutes. Yes, but it would have been 11 minutes along an A road. Yeah, and um, this is a really nice morning, yeah. I hope. I think it'll be fine. It's totally quiet, simple little place. There's some people who like George. So, if you liked this, give us a thumbs up. If you want to, give us some comments. If you're feeling like subscribing, I pity you, but please do. And hit notifications for all of those bell thingies that will make your phone go all bingle boop. Good? <laughs> you nailed that, mate. Nailed that one? All right. Oh, I've got a number. Not that I pity you for subscribing. It's just the fact that you're going to be oh, sitting through thing. all this. And we're recording. We found a mooring. Actually, we're floating free in the middle of the canal right now. <laughs> Not tied to any. You're so mean to me. Just wait for this to break. Okay. Although I'd stop here for you because you can have a long wait. Yeah. They've put some moorings there, and I was like, that'd be a good mooring. No shoppy. Yeah. <laughs> no shoppy, shelf. No shoppy shelf there. Easy tie up. Anyway, stop sidetracking. Let's go to middle. I'm just going to point out it was you that just I mean, I was talking to me. Okay. I didn't mean that to be like, quite I didn't Stop sidetracking, Michael. Stop. Okay. I'm just not a sidetracker. Right. You are a sidetracker. I'm totally a sidetracker. <laughs>